positive vibrations. Good day to you all. This is a major. Thank you for tuning in. Major TV. Let's talk. Let's get into this um interview. And I'm also sharing a video with you all. And we're gonna talk about the value of black homes. Positive vibrations and good day to you all. This is Major. Hey, thank you for tuning in to Major TV. Let's talk. The go to source for all things black. We are all told, live your life to the fullest. I'm here to do just that. ATV Let's Talk serves as a door to the black experience. We plan to explore black life through commentary, education, and entertainment. Walk with us on this journey. Also, go subscribe to Made TV Let's Talk .com and experience the journey as we build and grow as a family. And don't forget, subscribe, notification bell, like, share, and comment. There is a penalty for being black. How present day racism devalues black people and their property. What to do about it by Julian Beerman Thursday. This interview was of Andre Perry, Know Your Price. Picture two homes, the same size, e built, the same year, same condition. Both in neighborhoods were similarly decent. Public school access to music like libraries, museums, and restaurants. One's worth four hundred or forty, excuse me, forty thousand dollars less. What's the difference? The less value home is in a majority black neighborhood, while others were in a neighborhood with very few or no black residents. This is one of the findings from research co-authored by Andre Perry, a senior fellow. A senior fellow at the Brookings Institute for years, the impact of central discrimination on Black Americans' ability to build well through one of the most reliable pathways to well building for white Americans' ownership has been clear. But was Perry's research so interesting that he controls for those factors? For example, low wealth Black communities meaning that the housing stock often isn't as good and public schools have less funding. Still find that homes in the majority of black communities aren't worth as much as those where there are very few black people. That, to Perry, is evident that it's just not about, it's just not, it's not just past positive that explain the racial gap, racial financial gap. Reason D is also Contributing, he points to twenty points to twenty twenty one research from Freddie Mac indicating that homes in majority minority neighborhoods are more likely than those in white majority white neighborhoods to receive appraisals that are below price that buyers and sellers agree on. But he finds evidence in other areas of the housing market and. In other areas as well. Perry expanded his 2018 research into a book, Know Your Price, Valuing Black Lives and Property in America's Black Cities, published in 2020. Morgan Watts spoke with Perry about his research, the role of debt, excuse me, the role of debt in devaluing black property, true indications of a power shift. The conversation has been edited. And condensed. Market wide, let's start with the book. In the title, you talk about the idea of black lives and property. A lot of people are familiar with the concept of Black Lives Matter in the in the movement. But what is it? What is and what is it important to consider the value of black people when you're talking about that issue? Perry, we found that homes in black. Neighborhoods are underpriced by 23%, about $48,000 per home. Cumulatively, that's about $150 billion in loss equity. That's a concrete material loss that people living in black communities grip with. But also, a method for how we are valued overall. Our lives are more 
much more valuable than we are priced for speech. When I wrote the book, I certainly wanted to build up on working on housing. It's more about getting us to see that it's not people, that it's not black people that are fought for the state of our communities and our lives. There was a penny for being black. It's a penny for living in black neighborhoods that strike black wealth and opportunity in years of our lives. I say there, I say that there is nothing more, there's nothing wrong with black people that ending racism can't solve. But I really wanted to show that and use data. The numbers are compelling and they're important. But it's more about our lives and how black people are systematically devalued in many different ways. I'll start right here. And when I go back and I expound on, uh, 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 when I go to expound on this, I got to think about what he said. But when Paris researches so interested that he controls for those factors, who is he? For example, low wealth in black communities. Why is low wealth in black communities? Meaning that housing stock often isn't as good. The public schools have less funding. Why is that? And still find that homes to all the black communities are worth, aren't worth as much as those but there are very few black people. Why? Um, he also said, we found that black neighborhoods are underpriced by 23, 23%, about 48,000 per home. Cumulatively, that's about 150 billion in loss equity. Wow. Um, he also said, there is, no, there is a penny for being black. There is a penny for living in black neighborhoods that extract wealth, opportunity, in years of our lives. Look, what this brother's talking about in the interview, I'm going to break it down. He talks about realigning. He's talking about predatory lending. He talks about racism and discrimination. And he lay out, not just in words, but historical data, research. In his, in his video I'm about to drop, about the infamous couple that was discriminated against as far as when the house was being appraised in California, he's in um, this video. And when he said, know your price, that's what he mean, know your price. Know the value of your home. Because they would under they would underpraise your home. We know about the infamous movie that came out um, on Prime, Prime Video, Amazon talking about this couple in a white neighborhood and how they was um charging them higher for the house, interest in what had you. We know what happened in Chicago um when red line was really defined um on the white side of the track, home was significantly so for less on the black side of the track, so high. There was so much historical data. And I got to shout out this brother for even um, doing what he did because it's always important that we have brothers and sisters that are going to write about it, talk about it, and be about it. And I have to get this book because we deal with every form a racist discrimination that people don't want to talk about, that people don't want to look at. And we as a people, even identifying it, it's hard for us to even fan them fighting back, but there are ways. But if we're not reading, we're not becoming informed, we're not coming together, become more self-determined. Because our community, when you when we talk about the homes issues, the poor homes, to poor schools, to funding, um, everything. We show we still call the pin on the system. We are taxpayers, and I do believe that you should dress them accordingly. In my opinion, everybody don't agree with me, that's cool. 
but we should be more so the turn. And all this just is triggers. All this is just things to just open our eyes and see that we have to do something. All this fighting, all this confusion, all this who won't leave, who won't do this. We have so many problems that we have to focus on. And we know one thing, owning a home, and I'm a homeowner, is one of the biggest assets you can control, um, build, and become wealthy and create generational wealth. And it's just another story and tell of how black people have to overcome, even though we know about the ratio um, financial gap. We know about how it was created and so forth so on. If you don't, you need to definitely um, definitely read about it, research on it. But even now, it's still going on. But I had to um, read this to you. I had to share this with you. Um, I stumbled across it. And I went back to this old story. Uh, not an old story. I think last year would have you were a white lady undervalued a black couple property. They got a white woman proposed like um, she lived there and they redecorated and whatnot. And another white lady come in there and appraised it like 1.4 million of value of the home. But when the black people did it, it was like 900, 980 um, K or something like that. So um, thank you for checking this video out. I will be bringing more content like this. Y'all like and share this video. Like and share this video. If you're new to town, hit the subscription button. Hit the notification bell if you want to catch content daily or oftenly. Um, I will share this video in closing about this couple. If you're not, um, if you're not aware, this really happened to somebody. But before I see that, I got to say something. I'm from New Orleans, and I was reminded about a lot of areas where black people own the property, especially on the Bar Bar Water area next to the French Quarter in New Orleans. If anybody knows them familiar, we'd have been down there. One time, black people owned it, and it was 200, 300,000, what have you, at the time, probably less when black people owned it. One's wife on it, or it's about a million dollars now. And they call it a whitewasher. Undervalue us, overvalue whites. And this justification that's going on around the country, all these urban areas, is an example there. But let me share this video with you all before I leave. Thank you for all your love and support. Thank you for constant. Um, being a reminder that information I share, things I do, do matter. And thank you how you contribute with what you know. A lot of my stories come from everyday people that care. I want to thank everybody for love and support. So check this video out. I'll be definitely, um, I'll be definitely dropping something real soon. I have a number of things I want to do. And I want you all to definitely realize they're going to take a us movement, we the people movement, to actually get the job done. We have to become self-determination. Check this video out. I'll be speaking to you all soon. Y'all stay focused, stay on cold, and just be black. Peace. It's a part of American real estate that is immoral and racist. It's called whitewashing. It's a process where African Americans may get a higher value on their property when they remove themselves entirely from the selling process. CNN's Joe Johns with more on what happened to one couple in San Francisco. Tanisha and Paul Austin bought their home in the Marin City area of Northern California in 2016. It came with a coveted view of the bay, but a long to-do list. It just needed a lot of work, um, but we was up to the task. And their work paid off, or so they thought. According to court documents, the Austins added a deck, a gas fireplace, and additional living space. In January of 2020, with the build-out almost finished, 
they decided to refinance and take some cash out of the property. They got an appraisal. It was right before COVID hit, so the, the, the rates were extremely low. So we were trying to refinance to take advantage of the low rates. And to their surprise, the appraiser wrote in her report that the house was only worth $995,000. We were sick, sick to our stomach. We was upset, we was angered. I was disappointed because one, I knew that the house was worth more than that. And secondly, because we needed the house to appraise for a certain amount um, in order for us to be able to um, pull out the capital in it. And when it didn't come in at that, it was devastating. They suspected that the seeming low ball valuation from an appraiser who happened to be a white woman may have had something to do with their race or their location or both. Marin City has a sizable African-American population, unlike Marin County, which is mostly white. She uh, considered us living in Marin City and devalued our home based off of that. Yeah. Um, and it's all blackface. So they decided to put their suspicions to a test. They requested yet another appraisal and got a female friend who was white to come to the house to meet the appraiser to make it look like this was her house. I contacted her and I said, um, we have another, our, our appraisal came in low. We have another appraiser coming. Can you come and be me? But that's not all they did. They also removed any evidence that black people even lived there, a process that's been called whitewashing. I took down everything that resembled that this home belonged to us. Yeah, or to an African-American family. Yeah, our pictures. Even, I would say, even my hair products, I put them away. Um, so that um, someone would be tipped off by them. A different appraiser, also a white woman, according to the Aussens, who visited the house in February of 2020, came back with a valuation of more than $1,482,500, an appraisal 49% higher than the previous one. In dollars, that's a $487,500 difference between two appraisals that came about three weeks apart. In federal court, the Austins have sued the appraiser, Jeanette Miller, who gave them the lower estimate, alleging housing discrimination. Miller did not respond to several requests to either make a statement, grant an interview, or put us in contact with her lawyer. Devaluation of the property values and rights of African Americans and Hispanics is a deeply rooted American tradition that's starting to attract more attention in Washington. And it's not always about million dollar homes. Andre Perry, senior fellow at the Brookings Institution, writes about it. We found that homes in black neighborhoods are underpriced by 23%, about 48,000 cumulatively. There's about 156 billion in lost equity in black neighborhoods, 156 billion. At the end of the day, the issue raised by stories like this is about loss of wealth in black and brown communities. If you own property and you wanna take cash out to remodel, send a kid to college, pay bills or even invest in the stock market, a low appraisal of your property can be a life-changing event. But this may be an issue whose time has almost come. This past June, the Biden administration announced a task force to start looking into the problem. John and Brianna. Joe Johns, thank you so much. This is happening across the country. That is such a vivid example. It's such a, you're talking about half a million dollars. And Joe's right, it's a life changing experience first of all you're talking about morally life-changing because you just think that the system is stacked against you but also financially it's your life savings it makes a difference that lasts forever there's more of a focus now i think on generational wealth and how that is really lost for so many african-american families and, and you see in practice why it is happening it's awful that was a really this is major tv and this is brought to you by major like and subscribe to get your notifications okay. do it without you need to focus
Mixer, Major TV, and this is brought to you by Major. Brought to you. Like and subscribe to get your notifications. Couldn't do it without you, need your full participation. Uh -huh. And we give it back to the show. Uh -huh. Appreciation. Uh -huh.